Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience and broadcast. We don't think it's by chance that you're here today. Well, we do know that God has something for you. So on behalf of Pastor Raquel and myself, we just want to welcome everybody on here today. Listen, there is a word that God has for you. We are in our series dealing with the big mo, the law of momentum. And God wants to get you started in some areas this year to expedite the process. The word of the Lord came that it is a year of acceleration, the year of the catch up. So if there's some things you need to catch up on, or there's some places that you need to be in life, that God is saying, my power is going to manifest to get you there and to help expedite processes and things that you're dealing with. So listen, he didn't say it's the elimination of the process, but he says the speeding up of the process. And so there's some things that God wants you to get started with this year. And so he wants you to gain momentum in life. If you know anybody who needs to gain momentum in their life, I want you to share this with them right now go ahead and share this with as many people as you can share it to your social media platforms and like the page um, we want you to go ahead and do that it is very important for those on our YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed subscribe now click the notifications button so that you can get all uploaded content that we bring and so that it can be a blessing to your life listen y'all we here at spirit of fire are changing a culture igniting a passion and living a dream God has given us a mandate to teach his people who they are and to train them in their authority, to train them in their rights and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ and to help them pursue what God called and created them to do. And so it's time, it's time for you to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I'm telling you, the Bible declares and decrees it that this is the time for you to get up and to show, get up. Even I think it's in the amplified version of that scripture in Isaiah 60 and one, he says, get up from the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. In other words, he says, rise to a new life. He says, shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light has come. It is time to arise and shine. I don't care how long it's been, where you heard the promise and you hadn't seen it yet, this is your year of manifestation. Well, people say that every year. Listen, it's, it happens when the, the enlightenment of God's word hits you and when your eyes are open to see, then you will begin to walk in the fullness of what God has for you. You'll walk in everything, every promise that's just an amen. He says this, I have a pathway for your life and in that path is the good life. And so somebody say good life. You need to say good life, that God has a good life for me. It may not look good right now, but God has already designed a good life for you. He's designed a, plan, a path and a plan for you. And let, listen, there are going to be things that you have an adversary called Satan, the devil. He tries to come up. He tries to throw roadblocks in your way. He tries to trip you up along the way. He tries to mess you up. He tries to play tricks and games on your mind. But you got to know how to cast down those thoughts. And we want to teach you how to do those things. We want to teach you how to overcome everything that he's bringing at you. And he's thrown everything at you in life. And God is saying this, you are still here. You are still here. And my grace is sufficient for you. And I'm telling you, I just sent something already coming in. I sent something already. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready. I want your expectation on how today. Because I'm believing God with you for great things to happen. Great things to happen. Amazing things to happen. So I want you to go ahead now. Listen, log in. Tell us where you come logging in from. I want you to get ready. Call, listen, text somebody, call somebody. Say log in now, tune in now. I know there are many other platforms and streams you can, you know, streaming platforms you can be on, but you are here. God has given me a word for you. And so I want you to, to receive it today. All right, y'all. For this, listen, if this is your first time here, we want to just acknowledge you all. We want you to know that we love you. We appreciate you. And so if you want to just shoot us a message um, on one of our social media platforms or send us a message at info at spiritoffire.us, uh, but just you can put it out there to say, hey, this is my first time logging on. We want to welcome all of you from locally, globally, wherever you're logging in from. We believe God is going to touch you where you are today. So y'all listen, let's go ahead and get into this thing today. 
I got a word for you, so let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely today, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach the holy written word reverently. We thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart is open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you for it now. We thank you, Father, for a new season. We thank you for a new day. We thank you for fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh anointing, fresh revelation. We thank you right now that the eyes, Father, our wisdom of our understanding are being enlightened at all times. And we give you praise for it. We do covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Let this word come with clarity, with precision, skillfulness and sharpness. Thank you, Father, that I'm a wise master builder, that thank you that you are the architects of our souls. And we thank you right now that you show us the blueprint, the blueprint for each and every life. There are many different people watching today. We thank you that you begin to speak to them expressly and directly. Let them hear the voice behind the word for them. The thing that you want them to pull out of this word and this message today. And we pray right now for their success. We declare supernatural favor right now that doors are opening that no man can shut. We speak divine healing over their lives, over their bodies right now. We curse right now. We curse every strand of the COVID, of the Delta variant, COVID virus, every strand. We curse it at its root. We command it to burn up in the atmosphere. That Father, we thank you that every disease, germ, virus, bad, bacteria, and infirmity that tries to touch or infiltrate our bodies dies instantly now. We thank you that our bodies are performing a perfect work. We thank you for longevity, that we live long and we live strong. We thank you right now, Father, that your divine favor is even causing ungodly authorities to grant petitions unto us, that hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on our behalf, that we're increasing in the area of assets and real estate and expansion of territory. We thank you, Father, that policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on our behalf. That we win battles we don't even have to fight because you're fighting them for us. And Father, we have the posture and the position to receive from you that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so we thank you for it. We thank you for clarity of vision. We thank you for clarity of language. We thank you for clarity of effort and work and processes and systems and things that we're to do. We thank you for it and that we all function in the unity of the faith. And so we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor for it now. In Jesus name, amen. All right, y'all. It is, it is very important, it's vitally important that you begin to know how to pray and that you begin to pray because prayer makes a difference. It makes, the, it makes all, I mean, the world of difference. That prayer is you allowing God to get involved in your situation. What do you mean? You mean we allow God? Yeah, allow God because God has given us authority in this earth. And watch this, he can do nothing for man except a man prays. He can't get involved in your situation unless you allow him through the vehicle of prayer. Whether it's you praying, whether you have an intercessor or somebody in your stead praying, that men ought to always pray and not faint, give up, cave in or quit. Jesus says all power and authority has been given unto me, but then he told us to go. And so he's given us authority over all the power of the ability of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us or harm us. Why do I constantly say that? Because it's, what's the word, it's what the word says. I'm going to teach you your dominion, your authority, your rights and your privileges. That's my assignment. And so I'm sticking with it. And listen, it's time for you to get up. It's time for you to stop allowing the enemy to whip you in areas. If he's been whipping you in areas, listen, you have the right to stand up. 
You have the right to take authority over that joker and to tell him to stop no more. That's what the word rebuke means. It means stop no more. So if Satan tries to come up and attack your body, you can rebuke sickness and disease and tell it to stop no more. Listen, you will not come. You will not cause my body to deteriorate right now in any way, shape, fashion, or form. Right now, in Jesus' name, I command my heart to beat right. I command my organs to function properly. Properly. I command my I command my mind to be right. If you've been struggling in your mind and Satan has been whipping you in your mind with thoughts and things, thoughts of failure, thoughts of depression, thoughts of defeat, you have the authority to, to, to tell him to stop no more. I shut down that thought. I shut down and bring that thought into captivity with the word of God, the words of my mouth. And watch this. The Bible says that angels will hearken to the voice of God's word and they will go to work on your behalf. You have all of heaven as your backup. And now is the time to see. And this is the time. I'm just going right into this thing. This is the season where there is going to be supernatural power released because God's people are coming into the realization of who they are and the authority that they have. And our assignment here is to teach you how to function in that authority, to teach you how to walk in that power. And for each and every household, it is time for you to rise up. It's time for you to speak over your house. It's time for you to become the builder of your home, that you begin to build your life with the words of your mouth and it will cause things to be transformed and changed. You are the prophet of your household. You are the prophet of your life. God has given you the blueprint, but now once you see the blueprint, you need to speak according to pattern. What do I mean by that? When God shows you in his word what he wants you to be like, live like, act like, talk like, walk, walk like, you need to now align yourself with that and begin to speak into alignment with that. That I declare that I'm the righteousness of God. That means I'm in right standing with God. That means I have all rights and privileges of the Lord Jesus Christ because I'm an heir of God and join heirs with Jesus. So I have the right, just like Jesus created by speaking, I create by speaking. The way my father created by speaking. I create by speaking. That's the language of the kingdom of God. And that's what I'm going to walk in. I'm going to declare these things now in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to watch this. I'm going to build momentum this year. Momentum hits my house. Acceleration hits my house. When the word of the Lord comes forth, your job is to agree with it and to begin to speak it. I declare that you coming from the back to the front. I'm declaring right now that God is bringing your name up in somebody's mind right now that's going to assist you and that's going to help you achieve and go through these new doors this year in the name of Jesus. And whoever is trying to block your path, God is going to remove them and cause the way to be straight and plain. So you need to go ahead and get ready for a spirit of fire. You need to get ready for a body of Christ, wherever you logging in from, wherever you tuning in from. Listen, there is no, watch this. God is no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. You got to mix this with faith and you got to believe while you sitting there in your bed watching right now, you talk to your spouse and tell them this is our year. We're going to accelerate. We're going to grow in relationship. We're going to grow in our finances. We're going to grow in our physical bodies. Our family life is going to increase everything. God is going to grant us the dreams and the desires of our heart. We're going to travel like we've been wanting to travel. We're going to buy what we want to buy. We're going to live how we want to live and we're going to enjoy doing it for our bodies have to come into alignment for us to experience this good life. And part of the good life is divine healing. Part of the good life is soundness of mind. Part of, part of the good life is bank account full of money where we ain't got to be worried and concerned about a doggone bill any longer. You going from week to week and paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to overflow and increase generational wealth and blessings. Well, listen, not only you, but your children and your children's children going to be swimming in it. What are you saying, man of God? It is time. Watch this. And I declare that your life lines up with it. I declare that you begin to discipline yourself to now cause this thing to come to pass. I declare that any force that comes against you in opposition will be repelled and go seven ways from you in Jesus name. 
In Jesus name, I declare it in Jesus name. I declare momentum. I declare that the earth will yield forth her increase on your behalf right now in Jesus name. I declare that God is giving you the divine hookups right now. I declare that you're going to be in the right places at the right times, meeting the right people, making right connections. And that watch this, not only are they going to bless your life, but God is saying my anointing is going to begin to rise and come upon you so strong that I'm going to use you as a conduit to cause people to be transformed and changed by my love, by my power, by my word. And you will begin to see my manifested goodness, my manifested grace, my manifested purpose for your life. And you will come out of stagnation and slothfulness into the rhythm of my grace. And you're going to come into rivers and streams of my glory where you will begin to see power manifest manifested at an accelerated rate and you will begin to see my goodness manifest in your life so strong. You said, I've heard these things before. He says, but do you believe it now? Because the moment you believe it, acceleration begins to take place and I'll cause things this week to start happening and even next week to start happening and building upon and building upon and building upon from brick to brick, from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And God says, I'll begin to build at an accelerated rate and I'll give you the blueprint. I'll give you the workers. I'll give you the people to help you. All right. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. This is my year. I want you to type. This is my year of acceleration. This is my year. 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 Yeah. Yeah. This is my year and it won't be a hard thing. It won't be a hard thing. I declare it won't be a hard thing. You got y'all got to re realize. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What you mean? It won't be a hard thing. It won't be a hard thing. Why? Because you've heard these words. Many of you have heard a lot of these things, but God says you fail to execute them on a consistent basis. When you get into the rhythm of consistency of speaking my word, that you will begin to see greater momentum take place because now you are framing your world with the words of your mouth. It is extremely important what you speak because vision brings clarity. Vision is what you see. And if you don't see clearly, then you won't speak clearly. If you don't speak speak clearly, then there won't be things. Things won't happen the way that they need to happen. What God is saying is what I'm about to do where you've been murky in what you've been seeing. I'm about to bring clarity to what you've been seeing and you will see clearly. Now you will hear clearly. Now watch this. The reason why some of you haven't spoken properly is because you haven't even heard it properly because your hearing goes along with your vision because watch this. When you hear, it's like this, it's like a person who's deaf. Sometimes, a lot of times, a person who's deaf has problems talking, not because their, their speaking faculties are off, their speaking faculties can be perfectly in alignment and everything working well. It's the fact that they can't hear right. It's the, ha the fact that phonically they can't hear, so watch this, because they can't hear, they can't formulate the words to say it properly. And so what happens is, God is saying this, I'm about to unclog your ears so that your speech can be in alignment alignment so you know exactly what to say so you know exactly how to build because now watch this vision gives you blueprint that contractors your heavenly agents the angels of God and that God not only will bring unseen forces but seen people across your path to help build you to the place of what you're seeing and where you speaking because God says you shall decree a thing it'll be established but I'll lighten your pathway I'll show you what to do to accomplish what you're speaking. He says this, you got to speak it. You got to declare it. And you have this authority for out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. You got to get ready for it. They say, man, this is, it, it ain't nothing changing. God's word does not change. The principles are still the same. You got to work it. You got to work it. It's that simple. It's that simple. 
Many of you have been hearing you going this place and that place and you've heard that message and that message, but it still seems as though that things just haven't accelerated or manifested to the degree. Watch this. It ain't nothing wrong with the seed or the word that you've heard. Now it comes back to the ground of your heart. What is it that you're doing to produce what it is you're hearing? Are you setting up systems? Are you setting up daily regimens and rhythms to begin to manifest? That's the effort. So you have the vision, the language and the effort. What do you see? What do you say? And then what do you do? So now as you begin to do whatsoever a man doeth, God said, I'll prosper. Whatever you do, I'll prosper. It's not that you haven't even seen it. It's not that you haven't even been confessing it to a degree. Some of you haven't been confessing it consistently. And so what it does is the reason, oh, that's good. When you have it, when you get off of confessing it on a regular basis, what happens is you lose sight of your objective and your goal. And so if Satan can shut down your consistency in areas, he'll shut down the level of consistency in your progress. You have to stay the course. That's where discipline comes in. So whether you feel like it or whether you don't feel like it, you're going to have to get up and pray. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it, you're going to have to put forth the work or the effort to accomplish and achieve. Whether you feel like or whether you don't feel like it, whether you feel like walking in love or whether you don't feel like walking in love. I have to make a decision to put my flesh under and to allow the spirit of grace, the spirit of God to manifest through me to say, I'm going to train myself to be a loving person. I'm going to train myself to be faithful and to be committed. And I'm telling you now that the spirit of God is popping many of you back into position right now. He is popping you back into place. And because he's popping you back into place some of you will feel a pain or a shift of that popping but he says i'm popping you back into place so that you can move swiftly now into the thing i've called you because so much time has passed and i hear this even over the last five years many of you that there'll be things that you're going to catch up on that were delayed because you were out of position he says when you get into position it's going to begin to, to accelerate all right it's like, man, you just came straight out with this. Yeah, whatever. I didn't even know I was going to do this myself. So, hey, now I want to show you something real quick. I want to show you something real quick. Um, it's in the book of Mark, chapter eight. The book of Mark, chapter eight, verses 22 through 25. Um, last week, I talked to you about these three key things to cause momentum. And that was vision, effort. I mean, vision, language and effort. So depending on what you see, what you say and what you do will begin to manifest some things. Um, in Mark 8, 22, I'm going to read 22 through 26. Yeah, 26. Um, well, I'll just read 22 through 25. It says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, speaking of Jesus, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he has spit on his eyes, now that's a whole nother thing. Why did he lead him out of town? Why couldn't he just do it where he currently was? So he may have had to get him. Now, we can speculate, but I've seen in other instances that Jesus would get people out of certain atmospheres or environments to get them to another place so that he could talk to them and deal with the thing that, th that they were going through. Now, watch this. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw art. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. But then it says Jesus sent him on his way to his house, saying, neither go into the town nor tell any in the town. Now, watch this. Now, this is going to be interesting. Why, why did I read this? I want to read this even dealing with vision. I want to read this dealing with clarity. The first thing that Jesus did, like watch this. The first time he laid hands on him, this man had partial sight restored. He began to say, okay, I see, I see men as trees walking. Okay, so watch this. So Jesus laid hands on him again. He prayed for him again. And this time the guy saw clearly. So Jesus, watch this. This wasn't an instantaneous thing, but it was a progressive miracle in healing. And so because it was progressive, Jesus stuck with him until he saw clearly. He did not leave him in the restoration process, but he stuck with them until there was full restoration of sight. 
God is not going to leave you. He's going to work with you and there are going to be people in your life that's going to, that God is bringing to stick with you for those whose vision has been murky and that you've been blind, spiritual blindness, things you could not see, things that you didn't know how, where to go, which way to turn, which, which, which path to take. That God is saying, I brought people into your life to assist you and to help you walk through this restoration process to get you back on track. But this is an interesting thing that I saw in this. Not so much the healing, but something that happened during the healing. The guy also said, watch this. I believe this guy was able to see before this. You said, why do I say that? The reason why I say this is because he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. If the guy had been born blind, he would have never known what a tree looked like because he would have never seen one. So the fact that he was able to describe what he saw meant at one point he had a point of reference of sight where trees were concerned and even men. And so this is important. So to me, it seems as though this guy once could see, but something happened that caused blindness to take place. And now Jesus shows up to restore the Bible. He restored. When you restore, that means you take it back to a former state. So watch this. So watch what is God saying now? He says, some of you used to see clearly, but something happened. And with that thing happening, it caused now your vision where, where, where once you were so clear as to what God told you, but over a period of time and events, for whatever reason, it caused you to second guess what it was you first saw. So God is saying, I'm taking you back and I'm going to restore your sight. And watch this, because the loss of vision and watch this will cause loss of direction, which will cause you to become stagnant. And where you're stagnant, then we watch it. Remember, we said last week, depression sets in. And so because now you didn't know, and now you'll take natural things to deal with a spiritual issue. And God is saying, I'm speaking right now to you for spiritual blindness to be removed so that now you will see clear again to get back on track so I can get you back into the rhythm of the purpose and the plan that I have for you. So you got to now say, and I declare restoration. Watch this. This is why Paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened so that you can see clear. If you see clear, you're going to move quicker. If you see clear, you'll move quicker because watch this. You know exactly where you're headed, which brings restraint so that you won't get off and to do something that you know you didn't see yourself doing. So anytime somebody asks you to come do something that gets you off of your assignment, you can graciously say no, because that's not a part of what God called me to do. Because time is so of the essence that God says, I've allowed you to do some things that you wanted to do, but now the reins are coming on you so that now you get into position to what I told you to do so that now we can all move forward together because every joint supplies and God positions you in the body as it pleases him. And so now God is saying, I am popping you back because you've been dislocated, disassociated. And so now I'm going to reconnect you again. And this is what God is saying right now to us, spirit of fire. I'm bringing you back together again so that now I can accomplish what I always did, what I always said I was going to do. I never forgot the times of prayer. I never forgot the words you declared. You might have forgotten them, but just like with Cornelius, they have come as an arm, as a memorial before me. And I have come to answer the Lord of Seboth, the Lord of Harvest, the Lord of Hosts has come to answer answer the cries of my people over the years. And that's why the acceleration is taking place. There is a backlog that has to manifest at a short period of time. And that's why acceleration is going to take place. I'm going to close the gap of time that has been wasted. And I'm going to bring you back to the place where you always should have been. Okay. 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 So now, God's saying this, I need for your language now to begin to line up. Because I say, as you decree things, Jesus said, whatsoever you shall say, 
Doubt not in your heart, but believe. Okay. So now our job is to, once we clearly hear us clearly, that's good. Ooh. Once we clearly hear or see, you can clearly see by what you clearly hear. You can clearly see by what you clearly hear as well. And then God will give you vision again. What is the vision? What is it the thing that he's told you to connect with? What is the thing, the part to play? What is it for some of you that a part to play of this work? If it's your part to help serve in this capacity or that capacity, that God is saying now the unity. And remember in Genesis 11, when he talks about the thing that they've imagined to do, it won't be restrained from them because the children of Babel came together to now build this tower and city, this city and this tower that will reach to heaven. And God says, we got to step down here and mess up this project and watch this because the thing they've imagined to do is not going to be restrained from them, but not only this project, but any project that they endeavor to go upon, then nothing can stop them. Why? Because the people are seeing the same thing. They're saying the same thing and they're doing the same thing. So God says, if I can get you in your home, because this is why Satan brings division in your homes. If he can bring disruption because of lack of clarity, then your language is off. Sometimes you want to arrive at the same place, but you're not saying the same thing but you want to arrive to the same place. And so sometimes what it takes is sometimes it takes a mediator. Sometimes it takes the willingness for you to submit, to listen properly, to hear things right. And the, watch this. If you sit and hear things right, as well as say things right, then you will come together quicker to get the job done. And so what Satan would try to do is bring frustration in your home and in your relationships so that he can disrupt the language because that's how God disrupted the progress of the children of Babel. He came down and confounded their language where they couldn't understand one another. If you are now in, a, in an endeavor with people and you can't understand what they're saying, you can never move forward together. And that's why God says communication is so crucial in vision casting and vision accomplishment, because if the team coming together is not saying, seeing or doing the same thing, then you can't function and flow together as one. And watch this. You won't accomplish much. But he says, what I'm doing is I'm calling a coming together. It's almost like a mass exodus of people who got off the vision. He says, I'm bringing you back onto the vision so that this thing can be expedited now in Jesus name. You say, OK, I'm telling you now, the minute, the moment, the moment, the moment, the moment, the moment this happens, there will be there will be acceleration and quick advancement in areas just at the thought of it, I'm gonna tell you how I'm seeing it. It's almost like, and how I'm preaching in there, it almost feels like there's such an ease to it. Oh man, this is good, okay. And I said this before, it's almost like your minimum effort will begin to cause God's maximum power to manifest. All right, let me, let me say, remember he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, a grain, a tiny grain of mustard seed. You shall say to this sick of mine tree, be plucked up from the root. You will speak to this mountain, tell it to go to yonder place. He says that small amount of faith can produce this great result. Even if you just have small faith in an area, just the fact that you begin to mine out that faith and you begin to exercise that faith in that area, it'll cause supernatural doors to open, supernatural things to be created, supernatural productivity, supernatural increase in any and every area. I declare in the name of Jesus that we function and flow together as one, that even as the Godhead is one, so are we. And so now, this is so important. I challenge you with this, Spirit of Fire. I challenge you with this, partners and supporters. I challenge you to begin to pray for one another. Pray for us. Pray for your pastors. Pray for those in leadership. And watch what God begins to do with your heart. We're praying for you. Are you praying for us? 
Are you praying for our success as well as yours? Are you praying for our well-being as well as yours? Are you so consumed about what you're going through is all about you? But watch this. When you now get your focus off you and onto others, and God will get their focus off of them onto you, that you begin to now come into covenant relationship and fellowship where once again God says, I will restore relationships, and the love and the synergy and the oneness will begin to increase, and nothing will be restrained from you or held back that you will subdue nations, you will train leaders, you will release them into the earth. And God says, this will be a hub where I will bring people in to raise them up, to deploy them into the earth, to now conquer and to subdue every area of influence that there is. And he says, will you be a part of this? Will you allow me to utilize your gifts to now push this vision through? And in the process of you being faithful to that, which is another man, God says, I'm willing to give you that which is your own. And you will experience increase at the place that God has assigned you to be because where he's assigned you to be is every provision that you will ever need. Amen. So now, I'm going to end with this. I didn't have a whole bunch to say today. Well, I did say a whole bunch, but (laughs) this word momentum, it means strength or force gained by motion or by a series of events. So Jesus said it like this. My, my meat is to do the will of my father. In other words, my strength comes when I obey the will of God for my life. When you obey God's will, strength comes back to you. It energizes you. It motivates you. It causes that momentum in that area. And God is saying, I am bringing revitalization back to you. I am re-energizing, restructuring, and reordering things. Um, ordering, th- yeah, bringing, yeah, what's the word reorder? That's, that is a word. But I'm bringing everything back into alignment. Okay. So remember, vision, language, effort. Vision, language, effort. What do we see? What do we say? What do we do? What do we see? What do we say? What do we do? What do we see? What do we say? What do we do? He says, what I told you from the jump, I never changed it. I'm the Lord God and I change not. You can get back into your position and place. Man, whoever this is for. And he says, I'll bring freshness. I'll bring a newness. And it's time to do it. So let's believe God for the great, the amazing, and the supernatural. There's some things that I'm, I'm believing. I'm going, I'm going to release it soon. I'm still, I'm, I was praying, and I'm going to go visit some areas real quick. But I believe the Spirit of God spoke to me a little while ago, some time ago. And he says, I never forgot what you prayed for in the beginning. He says, you might have forgotten about it, but I never did. And he brought some things back to me. And so he says, watch this. And it's something that is going to take faith to, to manifest. It's going to take faith. But I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see. I'm so excited to see physically what I see internally. But I'm even more excited for you to see. Because what God is going to do is revive your faith to the degree of, wait a minute, whatever I do for my house, he says, I'm going to do it for your house. Whatever you cause to come to to bring the past for my kingdom's sake, that same grace I'm bringing on you, that same anointing, that same fire, that same increase that you ought to get ready. And he told me this also. I need you to focus this year on, watch this, 
debt cancellation as well. So I need you to get ready for supernatural debt cancellations to take place. I need you to get ready because he says, I need my people in position. I need them healthy physically. I need them healthy financially. I need them healthy mentally because watch this. I said, I'm going to bless you to cause you to be a blessing to somebody else. And God is getting ready to come and wreck your house. Whatever ain't of him is coming out and whatever is of him is going to be poured in. And God is saying, I want to turn your homes into the garden of Eden where when people come in, they will see my goodness and can do nothing but say, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes that there is a restoration taking place in every household. Now under the sound of my voice in every household that's going to watch this in every household connected with us, that there is going to be a divine restoration and there's going to be an excitement and there's going to be a new energy and my power and my grace and my glory and my anointing is going to manifest so strong that it'll transform lives. Listen, lives you coming in contact with in unexpected places. My power is going to start showing up. And he says this, because you connected with this anointing, I'm going to give you the ability to speak into people's lives and see the things that are binding them up for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free. The same grace same grace and it is so and it shall come to pass see the confidence that i have now is not in my word it's in his word his word coming off the trigger of my tongue will produce supernatural power power man i sense this thing i sense an authority i sense a confidence I sense a boldness like never before, but I sense a clarity and precision, precision that we speak like Jesus spoke. And it's with such ease that we'll, it's going to be common to see uncommon things. It's going to be common to see the super upon the natural. And it is so in Jesus name. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed out there. There may be somebody out there that you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but God is dealing with you today. Listen, all you got to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You have the power. You have the ability to change and transform your life by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Listen, if that's you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never made this confession of your faith, I want you to do this. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. You promised me eternal life, and I receive it now. In Jesus' name. Also, Father, I want you to say this. Say, Father, you promised me the gift of the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. As you just sitting there worshiping God in your own homes, wherever you are right now, I want you to know that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit Himself has come to live, dwell, and abide in you. Watch this, because your watch this, your spirit has become open to receive Him because you're born again. You have a brand new spirit. You have a brand new born again human spirit. You are spirit. You possess a soul, mind, will, intellect, emotions, imagination, and you live in a physical body. Your spirit is made new now. You're going to heaven. But God wants you to have heaven here on earth. And this is our time to be trained in the ways of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, God's method of operation, how God does what he does, his laws, his principles, his mandates. 
we apply them to our lives and we begin to see the results. Now, for those that are just coming in, you're considered a spiritual babe. That means you need milk to begin to develop and to grow. And the Bible talks about desire the sincere milk of God's word so that you may grow thereby. What is that? Learning what salvation is about. Learning who the Holy Spirit is. Learning how to develop yourself spiritually. Learning how to grow in this thing. Learning how to pray. There are many people who say they pray, but they're just talking, but not really producing results because they've never been trained as to how to go to God. We want to help you in that area. So, if you don't have a church home and you want to connect with this ministry, we just want you to simply send us a, a message. Let us know at info at spiritoffire.us, info at spiritoffire.us, or you may say, okay, you can just send us a, a, you can DM us in one of our social media platforms. Let, them know, let us know, hey, I want to know what it's going to take to become a member, but whatever it is, whatever information you want to learn about as to what the ministry is about, the vision of the ministry, where we're headed, where we're going, we want to be a blessing to you. Our job is to serve. And we've had my wife and I, and, and, and even my family, we have a renewed vision of servanthood. We want to be a blessing to you. We love you. God has called us to do this thing. This is one thing you got to understand about this. I didn't come up with this assignment. <laughs> I didn't just sit one day and just say, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to Richmond. I'm going to start a church. No. God told us to come back. At that time, we didn't even want to come back. But God began to change our hearts and says, there's a work that I have for you to do. There are things I've imparted unto you and trained you in that I need to train others in. And so when God says, I want you to come here and start this work, I want you to teach people who they are and their authority and their rights and privileges as believers on Jesus. Watch this, getting them to pursue their purpose. What is it that they were created to do? And to help now manifest my love through outreach efforts and to be a blessing to people. And so that's what we want to do. So if you believe that God is calling you to connect with this ministry, reach out to us today and we'll have somebody get in touch with you. It is important where you go to church. It is important who you are fed, like who feeds you. It's important. It's important. It's important, saints, trust me. So we don't take this assignment lightly. We love you and we thank God for you. Well, at this time, also we're gonna honor God in our giving. There's some information that's coming up on your screen as to ways that you can sow and that you can give. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. The tithes and offerings, see your tithes is a thing. He says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. That's the place of supply. He says, watch this. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house, provision and supply in my house. And God says this. He says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Who's the, who's the devourer? Satan is. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He says, as you honor me with this tithe, I'm going to make sure that that joker does not come in to steal, kill, or destroy anything in your life. So, Father, we thank you. As we honor you with our giving, we thank you that you rebuke the wicked one. And Father, right now, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the courage that you deposit, the faith to even begin to tithe for many who haven't done it. And so we thank you for it now. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for increase upon their lives as they give today. That, Father, each and every person under the sound of my voice, whatever you're telling them to do, I thank you right now that they have the courage and the strength to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. So, y'all, listen, there, there are things that are up there, uh, ways, different ways for you to give. There's a QR code. You can scan it. Um, it'll take you to a secure page where you can give, and your information is secure. We don't sell it to third parties, anything like that. But we just thank God for your continued support. And I'm like the Apostle Paul. The God that called me to do this will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. If you want to experience increase, begin to sow, begin to plant and watch the God of increase come upon your finances, upon your family, upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, y'all, 
I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. I enjoyed this time with you today. I love you guys. I pray God's blessing upon you. I pray his favor upon you. I declare and decree accelerated growth increase, favor and blessing upon you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.